Hi, Joe. Um, I am a big fan of your uh, music. I just had watched Spiderhead uh, earlier this week, uh, and I love your score there too. So obviously you have an eclectic range. Uh, can you talk about what first brought you to music and specifically scoring uh, films or docuseries? Oh, absolutely. When I was a kid, I just, I loved watching movies. I loved telling stories. And so, you know, combining that with my musicality, with my mus musical training was just the most natural thing to do. And so, you know, that also is why I'm so, like you said, very eclectic. I love all kinds of music. I grew up playing in youth orchestras, marching bands, wedding bands, like all sorts <laughs> of stuff. I, I loved hip hop as a kid. So, you know, I think that really defines, you know, defines me as a musician that I, I love combining styles and exploring different styles. That's awesome. Now, how did you first begin working with National Geographic? Who brought America the Beautiful to you? What was the pitch? Yes, it, it was it was Vanessa Berlowitz and Dan Rees over at Wildstar TV who contacted me. And, you know, they have incredible resumes of nature series. So I was wondering why the heck they were calling me because I've never <laughs> done one before. But, you know, they were really adamant from the start that they didn't want this series to sound like any other natural history series. I think I think for better or worse, there is an expectation for how the scores are going to sound for these types of series. And I think they really they really wanted to break that. Uh, break that mold and and ask me to do what I do best, which is explore electronics, explore acoustics, explore all sorts of different collaborators and performers. And I'm really proud of what we were able to put together because of that. Absolutely. It, it definitely does not sound like your average docu-series. Um, but what I especially love is how much Native voices were incorporated into the project on every level, including the music. How early on did you have those conversations and was bringing people on like Joe and Dylan something that was part of the larger picture or was it just kismet? That, that was immediate from the beginning. You know, we knew that we uh, that we wanted to acknowledge the cultures and traditions of this country and and the Native American voices and, and that sort of uh, that style of singing and performing was just incredibly important to finding the sound of the score. And, and I think there's all sorts of things like that tucked in here and there. We have a, a bluesman named Leonard Lowdown Brown. We have an amazing violinist named Lucia Micarelli, who you've probably seen on tour with mm -hmm. people like Josh Groban. And then there's also S. Carey, who's an incredible so singer songwriter from Wisconsin. And I think that it was really important for me to explore and for us, the, the, the greater us, the entire show to explore the great musical traditions of this country and this, this, this continent, just like they explore the wildlife of the continent. Absolutely. I love how it feeds into the diversity that America really has that sometimes I think people don't even realize. Like as I was going through the episodes, I was like, oh my God, we really have everything and no one ever talks about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so how much uh, was, did you get to be sort of in dialogue with the producers as new footage was found or anything like that? Or did you work kind of separately? You know, this was, this was part of that great 2020 challenge and, and, and beyond, which is obviously the pandemic. And, and so we had a lot of these, we had a lot of Zooms, we had a lot of meetings uh, virtually and, and <laughs> that was very important to the team to have these to check in and and we would constantly have these sort of meetings and I would be sending music back and forth and they would send cuts of pictures back and forth so while we couldn't all be in the same room together it wasn't really until the end when we were recording the score that we all finally got to meet but uh, but but until then it was it was really almost as good as the real thing because everyone really valued this sort of dialogue that uh, music wasn't just this additive thing it was a true part of the fabric of the series oh that's wonderful was there any part of the collaboration process that was most surprising or rewarding to you as you went through it you know, I, I, none, nothing should surprise me because I've done this so much, but nothing, nothing uh, is more amazing than recording real voices. So mm. obviously already spoke about Joe and Dylan, incredible artists in their own right. At the very end of the process, we recorded an amazing choir named Tonality that is based here in Los Angeles. And their whole mission is 
uh, social justice, exploring, uh, exploring uh, diversity, um, uh, and then talking about uh, artistic freedom, exploration, and what their voices lent to the score just took it to a level that I, I couldn't even imagine. And, and everyone, everyone in the recording booth was kind of tearing up hearing them, hearing them sing and, and, and lend their voices to the series in some really key moments, especially the main title, obviously. Mm. But uh, it, you know, like I said, nothing should surprise me at this point, but something always does. And just oh. the power of music never, I never. Guess. <laughs> That's what keeps you coming back, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. hundred percent. I have the best job in the world. <laughs> oh. um, so now that it's complete, I guess, how much have you seen? Have you gotten to see the finished product? I have. It's absolutely oh. spectacular. I, it's absolutely spectacular. And, and, you know, one of the big challenges we have is, you know, everything while we're working is temp, you know, so, mm -hmm. so you know, we didn't hear Michael Jordan until we, we started uh, finalizing the music and, and to just hear everything come alive with Michael B. Jordan's voice uh, alongside the final recordings. It was, it was really yet another wonderful, wonderful surprise for us. Absolutely. Speaking of surprises, was there anything that you learned by watching that was most like surprising to you that you did not know about this country? <laughs> you know, every episode, every you know few minutes, I'd learned something brand new. So, for instance, one of my favorite parts of of of, of the series, and there are so many, but this just happens mm -hmm. to be one that is at front of mind is is about the beach mice who have to evade these snakes that are always trying to eat them and so they've come up with this really clever way of fooling them into into basically you know they have this invisibility thing you'll have to see the series i don't want to spoil it but it really is so ingenious to see how or so wonderful to see how ingenious our creatures are um, and i think i think you know the most important thing maybe to take away from me that i hope the music helps helps our audience see is 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 that we're all part of one ecosystem, you know, that the quicker we realize that, the quicker we can make this world better for all of us. Absolutely. That was also one thing that I really liked was getting to see pieces of co different communities who do their part oh, to absolutely. help conservation. Um, so from your point of view, is there anything either that you have learned or that you just do um, that someone who wants to get started on, you know, not destroying our planet can... <laughs> can so, do in baby steps that's the thing right every it's so easy to sit back and say oh my goodness like what can i truly do as one person but really when you think of not just one person but if the millions of people who see this show and i hope it's millions upon millions of people do one little thing like you know uh be careful about how much they waste not throw something just right into the ocean or something you know be careful with the use of plastics that sort of thing there's so many things that each of us can do that it's additive right you know that really is is nature in a nutshell it's, it's all of us working together um and there's no substitute for that so i really i'm really proud of especially that episode that you mentioned tatiana where we get these people who are who are doing amazing amazing work uh behind the scenes that i just wasn't even aware of you, you know right. It truly is wonderful to see both sides. I've never seen that in a, in a series like this. Before. Exactly, exactly. I was like, oh my God, people. I think the first time they like brought the ranchers out in episode two and I was like, there are humans that we are going to see. But <laughs> um, my, my, my last question for you would just be, what is your next step? What are you working on right now that you're excited about? Future films, et cetera. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm very happy returning to Shadow and Bone and The Witcher. You know, it's, it's going to be really awesome to, to continue exploring those worlds, you know, which are, which, you know, people ask me what it's like to do two fantasy series um, and, you know, with, with some similar crossovers, right. not obviously not crossovers, but some similar similar thematics. And it, it is it is hard. I have to be really diligent about focusing on coming up with concepts for each that are unique from one another and then exploring those. But just like we came up with a whole concept for America the Beautiful, that's something I love doing. And Spiderhead, which you guys covered really well, you know, I think it's, it's, it's so incredible how I get to explore all these different worlds. It's, it's it really is the absolute best job. <laughs> I do, I love that. Is there, which I love both, but Witcher is like my jam. Uh, what is your concept when you go into Witcher, what like, what is like the big picture for you? You know, I try to boil boil things down to the simplest elements. So for instance, season two for me was was all about 
girl becoming a dad, you know, mm-hmm. Siri, you know, like, like this, basically this badass monster hunter, um, the turning into like this kind of softy dad and how that, that, uh, what that conflict is about, but also, you know, I then even zoom out a little bit more, which is like the, these characters fighting destiny, mm-hmm. you know, so for instance, Yen has a certain destiny she thinks she has that gets derailed. Geralt maybe has a certain destiny he thinks he has, but now he has this girl to take care of. And <laughs> every character is kind of derailed, you know, mm-hmm. and, and they have to deal with, they have to deal with their new condition, their new challenges um, uh, and, and, and overcome them. And I'm, but, you know, like what I've always said about the pandemic too, it's about overcoming these challenges and finding a way to thrive in, in spite of them. And so that, you know, that's kind of the big headline for the Witcher season. I've- <laughs> I love that. So uh, I guess speaking of, you know, like big pictures or like uh, motifs, what would you say are some of the most important uh, motifs or things that you go back to in America the Beautiful? Oh, my goodness. There's, you know, one of the biggest and one of the coolest things we did was uh, attach a camera to a fighter jet, and fly it around. Mm-hmm. I use we very liberally. I wish I was there. <laughs> okay. But I did get that footage very mm-hmm. early me a taste at it and that was actually one of the 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 things we spent the most time exploring because they were they had to be such musical moments because we're transversing there's one incredible moment where we go from you know the deep south and kind of the mm. mountain of mississippi and we go all the way to the mountains of of, of canada you know and so right. how do you how do you uh how do you present that scale musically and so we took a lot of time exploring that whether it was with the size of the, the instrumentation, but sometimes we also found that the size of the instrumentation is is isn't as effective as just one flute, you know. Right, right. You know, so it was really about um, about finding ways to zoom the music in and out, so to speak, from just one flute and one drum all the way up to our full orchestra, full choir, that sort of thing. So you know, that's one of the things that that really kept coming back. We kept coming back to over and over is how to how to scale the music up and down for the scale of our picture. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you so much. You did a fabulous job as always. Um, and I look forward to many, many more Can't wait musical to- moments. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Yeah.